Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting snowy ostriches and I'm going to be sipping on my cinnamon spice tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you can find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Alright, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, ultramarine blue, fallow green, burnt sienna, which I will call rust, fluorescent yellow orange, and Mars Black. And of course you can switch up those colors, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll use for some drawing. And then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number 10 round synthetic brush. And I have a number one round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same type of paint and even the piece of chalk is included in the kit. So all, this, all the good stuff's there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the first step is we're gonna be painting our background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are blue, black, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself kind of like a light, dusty blue. I'm gonna have the top and the bottom in this soft blue color, and then we'll get it to go lighter and lighter as we go towards the middle. So I have magically pre-mixed myself this soft, dusty blue color that I'm going for, and I'll show you how I got there. I'm gonna be using a lot of my blue, some of my white, and just a touch of black. So what I'm in essence doing is I'm lightening up the blue with white, and then I'm adding a touch of black to in essence desaturate it and make, and, and in essence kind of add gray to it. I do wanna save a little bit of this blue for later when we get to the eyes. So I'm gonna just kind of set aside a little bit of that blue so I don't mix it up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slowly start adding white and just a touch of black into my blue paint and it will turn pretty darn quick so just you know add those colors slowly and once you've got the desired shade that's a little bit still a little bit too blue for me I'm going to add a little bit more white to get it as light as I want and then I can add a little bit more of the black to make it on the grayer side so I'm really just going for a nice soft um, blue that doesn't have a lot of vibrancy to it because I know that I'm going to have a lot of vibrancy in the colors of my ostriches <laughs> so I don't want this background to overpower the um, the painting so I just kind of keep adding a little bit of black and white to get this into the the gray bluish value that I'm looking for yeah that's that's looking pretty good in through there so once I've got it into the color that I want which this is looking pretty good to me what I'm going to do is I'm going to be paint first mixing it all the way first <laughs> I'm going to paint the top and the bottom of my um, canvas and then I'm with this blue and then I'm going to add um, a lighter version of it or just pick up white for the center. So I've got my, my blue on my on my brush, so I'm gonna go left to right for a lot of the top. I would say probably about a quarter of the way you can come down with this blue. And then I'm gonna pick it up again and do the same thing at the bottom. So I'm going about a quarter way up on the 
uh, on the bottom and a quarter way down on the top with this soft blue. And then what I'm gonna also do is I'm gonna bring it a little bit around these sides too. So not a lot, just a little bit so I can have it almost like fading into the center. So again, just kind of pulling a little bit in the sides, in through here, nothing major. And now what I'm gonna do without washing my brush is I'm just gonna start picking up white paint. So I'm in essence going to get the inside to be lighter than the outside. And this is gonna provide almost like a spotlight of sorts on my, um, on my ostriches in the middle of the canvas. So I'm just kind of getting this center area to go lighter and lighter with adding white to my brush. And if you feel like you are, you know, still have a ton of the blue on your brush, that's okay because I want my center area, I don't want it to go all the way white. I want it to still have a little bit of that soft blue in it because later I'm gonna be putting snow on my ostriches. So I want the snow to in essence be lighter than the background. So I'm concentrating on not making this go all the way white, but if you want your background to go all the way white, you certainly can do that. And then I'm just going to kind of blend it in till I feel like I've got a good soft blend to it. And you can just kind of keep working it as it dries. I like to just kind of keep working that paint as it's drying to get it into that soft region. And then we are going to be using our piece of chalk for the next step. So once you've got your background done, you can put this large brush away wherever you'd like to. I might keep working mine just a little bit more here, but once you've got yours all nice and done, you can put the um, large brush away, take out your piece of chalk, and get ready for the next step. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're gonna outline our ostriches. I'm gonna be using my chalk. Um, I do wanna forewarn you though that before we start this step that you make sure that your canvas is nice and dry. So this is that step where you get to take the extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find a fun fanning method to get it dry or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So I'm going to guide you into um, the areas that I have my ostriches in and the, where I thought that they would be laid out pretty cute But you can certainly use this step-by-step -step way of drawing them to put them in any position that you want We're gonna do um, an eye. We're gonna do two eyes the little mouth or face part and we'll do a hat and some scarves and we're gonna be painting the fur as a separate um, as a separate step. So right now we're just kind of outlining the certain certain pieces to it. So I'm going to start with the ostrich that I have down in this direction. I'm going to start with my eyes. The, I'm going to give you some place markers. You can kind of make some dots at the same places as I do if you want them in similar positions. So the first one that I'm going to do is the right eye of this um, bottom ostrich. So I'm going to put a marker right about here, which is gonna be the upper right corner of the eye. And where that is on my canvas, if you were to look left to right and kind of find yourself a center point left to right and a center point up and down, just get yourself to the center of the canvas, you'll go a little to the right and about down two inches. That's where I have mine. My eye is gonna be about three and a half to four inches long and it looks like a teardrop type of a shape. So I'm going to make my shape something like this and that's going to be the shape of the right eye. I'm going to go to the left of this and be I'm going to be maybe about three inches away from the edge of my canvas. This is going to be the top of the other eye and I'm going to give myself a similar shape for the other eye like this. And then for the mouth I've got mine kind of tipped a little bit. The head is tipped a little bit so I'm going to have my mouth and face facial part tipped a little bit as well. So how I'm gonna draw this is I'm gonna start with just drawing a circle about, I would say a maybe two, two, like a two inch circle. And then I'm gonna do two smaller circles over on the right and on the left. And then I connect them with these little curved lines. So that'll give me the shape of the, the mouth. I'm gonna put two lines for my neck down in through here. And again, I've got mine kind of curved. And then I'm gonna give myself um, 
the outline of where my scarf is going to be. So I'm going to have mine coming just kind of bumping down on this side of my canvas and then I'll do the same thing on the right side. Only on the right side I'm going to have this kind of going down along the um, the bottom of my canvas so I can have some of the color kind of coming down the side of that. Then I'm going to put a super cute hat on here and my hat is going to be kind of tipped to the left so the opposite direction my my face is and I know that I'm going to have some fur in between but I'm just going to kind of suspend my hat up in the um, up in the air a little bit. I'm going to have it come in oh, a little bit maybe behind this eye a bit, something like that. And I'm going to have it just look like a fun kind of knit hat. So I'm just going to have a couple of like maybe that's going to be my rim. Maybe this is going to be um, the second part of my hat and then maybe I'll have like a little pom-pom thing on the top but of course you can make yours whatever way you want so that's all I'm going to do for this one I'm going to do the same process for the right one only this one's going to be coming out the side of my canvas and the head is going to be tipped in this direction so the first eye that I'm going to do <clears throat> excuse me is going to the the point of it the outer point of it is going to be right about here so I'm up from here maybe about four or five inches and a little bit to the left so somewhere in through there and then I'm going to give that same kind of teardrop shape only this time I'm making it sideways so I'm going to do something like this for this one and then I'm going to do my other eye is going to the tip of it is going to be somewhere up in through here so I'm about maybe three or four inches up here to the right and I'm maybe about three inches shy of the edge in through there and then I'm going to give myself another teardrop type of shape like that and I'm going to model the mouth the same way I did the one on the left only this one is going to be tipped in the opposite direction so I'm going to start with a circle for my center so something like this for my center I'm going to do some circ smaller circles on the edges and then I connect them with these curved little lines so that gives me the shape I want I'm going to give a little bit of a neck like that and then I'm going to give myself a scarf. So this scarf I'm going to have a little bit differently. This one is going to be wrapped around her. This one's just going to have a couple of dangly pieces. So I'm just going to give myself these cute little like long kind of scarf thing coming in through here. Maybe some little rippled edges. And then I'll have this one coming out in this direction and you can have as much movement to it as you want. I'm not going to do the bodies yet. I'm going to put the hat on though. So I'm going to have this hat tipped the opposite direction of the face. So this gives a fun balance to the painting um, and I'm going to have it a little bit different style than this one. So again, I'm just going to have a whole bunch of fun just giving myself this, um, you know, big hat that maybe, maybe this one goes over this eye a little bit, comes over onto the edge here. Maybe this ends up being the, the rim of the hat. So I'll give myself a little bit of a rim in through there and then my top of my hat again you can have yours whatever way you want I'm just gonna give mine this fun kind of almost like flat floppy kind of hat something like this and then maybe we give it a little bit of movement at the top and that's all I'm gonna be doing for my outline I'll be using my medium brush for the next step so once you've got your outline done you can do any little tweaks you want but you can put your chalk away take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step all right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be doing the base coat for the eyes, the hats, and the scarves. I'm going to be using my medium brush and I'm going to be using black paint. So there's nothing tricky here, nothing fancy. I just loaded my brush with black paint and really all I'm doing is coloring in these areas with black paint. We'll be utilizing other colors on top of them to give them their you know final details and all the special stuff to them but I'm utilizing this black as the base coat because it will provide us with a deep um, base color or a dark base color to put the um, the the colors on top of it which will provide us with some good dimension without having to do much work <laughs> so as I get down into the um, into the little scarf here. Again, I'm just kind of going along the edges of my chalk 
And if your scarf ends up reshaping or if you don't paint over all of your chalk mark, don't worry about it because you can either just easily erase the chalk with water later or we can paint over it with a future color when we, when we go to do the details on these particular objects. So again, just kind of filling in these areas with black paint. When I get to my hats, even though I have these lines delineating the different sections, I'm gonna just paint right over that. If you feel that you need to keep that for your own um, guide or reference, you can certainly just keep a little space between um, between those those markers. Even in through here where I have this going behind the eye, I can just paint right over it because I know that I can just re-establish the corner of the eye when I get to it. So I'm just gonna kind of paint right over my chalk and again, I know that um, I have my visual cues for the rim because I have these little indents in my hat. So that to me is a cue enough. If you want your hat to look nice and fluffy, what you can do is you can start the fluff process by just doing these little kind of dots along the edge. Like I like the pom-pom to be kind of fluffy, but you might want the whole knit hat to be fluffy. And in which case you can certainly just kind of add these little um, dots along the edges to give that um, the the information that it's going to have texture to it and it's going to have a little bit of fluff and it'll help you to establish that um, that element when you get to the colored part of the of that object. So again just kind of coloring these in in black and if they morph into a little bit different of a shape during this process that's all right. These are fun cartoon type of characters so they do not need to be perfect at all and whatever they morph into during this process totally works out because you're going to be able to make all kinds of fun um, adjustments and expressions and whatever happens happens because they're just too cute and they're cute any way that they land so you can have fun with it and even on the scarves you can certainly maybe you want to have some fun mittens or something hanging or maybe you want yours to be wearing some ugly Christmas sweaters or you know maybe you don't even want yours to be winter maybe you want to put a summer hat on it or you know some sunglasses or something so again have fun with this the the composition of it and if you want to change it into some other season or some other fun element feel free to do so and I'm just getting finishing up with my hat here. And then once I've got these elements just painting, painted in with their base coat of black, I will be utilizing this same brush for the next step, but I definitely am gonna wanna wash it and dry it. Just getting, uh, getting this last coat on here, or this last area. Oh, my hat just grew a little bit, which is all right. We, we embrace it when it has these fun, you know, changes along the way. And then once I've got this on here, I'm gonna wash and dry this medium brush in preparation for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the base coat for the beaks and the feathers. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are fluorescent yellow-orange. I'll be using um, fallow green, white, and burnt sienna. And how I'm going to do this is I'm going to pre-mix myself a, uh, a light kind of orange yellow color for the beaks. So I'm just taking a little bit of white and mixing it in with my um, yellow orange color here. So something like this. And because this is a fluorescent yellowy orange color, it's got yellow in it. So I'm bringing it to this kind of light creamy color in through here. And then once I've got it into my desired shade, I'm just gonna be painting in these sections in through here. You could add a little bit of the rust color to it if you wanted this to be more of like a peachy skin color, totally up to you. I'm gonna be using the rust later when I um, do the final details on it. But if this was too much of a yellow color for you, you could certainly um, tweak it all you want. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the same thing, just paint in this base coat on here. But again, you can. these are cartoon illustrated type of characters. You can really make them into looking whatever way that you want. And we're gonna be, like I said, doing a whole bunch of other details on top of this. And then once I've got that in there, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. 
And the base coat for this ostrich on the left, I'm going to be using Burnt Sienna. So I washed and dried my brush and I'm picking up Burnt Sienna. And how I'm going to do this is I'm going to have um, these feathers are going to be kind of giving you the shape of the face and the neck to for this particular um, bird. So this is my neck in through here. So really what I'm going to do is I'm just kind of pulling this burnt sienna color right up out of the, the edge of the scarf in through here. Then what I'll do is I'm going to underline my, my beak like this just with my burnt sienna color and then I'm going to pull it out in these little pieces of feathers <laughs> all along the edge of um, the bottom in through here. And I'm gonna, in essence, kind of do that with the whole beak. I'm gonna take this color and just outline the um, shape of the beak, something like this. And then I will pull the feathers out in whatever direction I want. So I want them to be pretty darn far out on this left-hand side. And you can really, bring these out in whatever direction that you want and have fun with it. The one on the other um, bird is going to be shaped a little bit differently than this one. I'll bring the feathers out a little bit different on the other one. So you can go different from one bird to the next. So don't feel like they both have to be exactly the same. So you'll see as I go through my process that I'm going to make mine a little bit different from one bird to the next. So as I come up along these eyes again just kind of bringing my color right up to the edges and then I'm going to kind of as I come on the outside edges of these eyes just bring this out just a little bit and it's okay if you bump into your black because a color like this has a lot of translucency to it and it will just see that black underneath so I'm not concerned um, if I bump into my black at this point so just bringing these little cute edges out in through there and then up on this top, I've got the hat that's going to be, all my feathers are going to be inside my hat for the most part until I do my second layer. But right now, just kind of giving myself some fun pieces coming out the side. And then as it reaches the eye, I don't really need to do a whole heck of a lot to it. Just bringing my brush in the direction that I feel these feathers would be coming out of the head. And again, I'm bumping right into my... Um, my hat because I know that the the feathers are going to be going into the hat so that's all I'm going to do on this guy and then or girl whatever you want to assume this is <laughs> then I'm going to wash and dry my brush and for the other one I'm going to be using the phthalo green for the base coat of it so I washed and dried my brush I'm picking up some of the green paint and again I'm going to kind of start the same thing this one's going to have a, a fun body but I'll do the head first because the head is pretty similar to what I did on um, the first one so I just got my green on my brush I'm going to kind of outline the um, the beak of sorts something like this and this one I'm going to have just these little short pieces coming off in through here so again you could certainly have each one resembling whatever you'd like it's they're your fun birds you can make them into whatever you want i'm going to bring this all along the um the top side of my beak and if you bump into your beak a little bit like i just did don't worry you'll be able to reshape the beak as we when we go to do the details on it later so no worries if if that happens to you and then i'm just going to kind of pull this out as it's drying just so I can get those nice those nice little fluffy edges to it and then do the same thing over on this side just kind of working my way up the head something like this and now that I've got that part done now I'm going to do the same thing on this side of the eye just kind of bringing it all right along the eye and then just pulling out a couple of little pieces out that side in through there I'll do the same thing over in through here bringing it up here and then just kind of pulling these little pieces out like that. Now here comes the fun part. I'm going to go up between these eyes and then um, in through here it just kind of disappears up under the hat. But then when you get to the part that is outside of the hat over here, you can really have some fun with pulling these little um, pieces of feathers way out as far as you want them to go. I'm going to, when I do my second layer on them, I'm going to have them really kind of 
like flying out and stuff but right now I'm just gonna do a few that are gonna be just kind of wily and and carefree and just kind of flipping out a little bit in through there but again have fun with yours you can do whatever you want on it and then his body he's we're gonna see more of this one's body and I want to have a little wing coming out but I'm gonna do the main body first so what I'm gonna do is just kind of pull this down in through here and give myself the this main kind of structure for the the body itself and then we'll do a couple of wings in a second i'm going to have this coming down past this piece of scarf in through here and i'm going to have it kind of coming almost down to the bottom of my canvas so it's like we're just kind of seeing the edge of his body in through here maybe bringing this a little bit further down and through there and then i'm going to have a couple of wings so i'm going to have this um as if you were just seeing a little bit through the through the um scarf and then i'll have this little edge maybe coming out like this like we're seeing a little bit of that wing just kind of popping out in through there maybe a little bit further like that and again these are just kind of fun cartoon wings so you can really have them be whatever way you want and then this one's just going to kind of go off the canvas over here and then we're going to be utilizing our um we're going to use our medium brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can wash and dry the medium brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our hats and our scarves we're going to use our medium brush and the colors i'm using are burnt sienna or rust uh fallow green and white and how i'm going to do this is i'm going to just really kind of add some fluff to these pieces of clothing um, with a dotting type of stippling technique. So the hat and the scarf on this one I'm going to be making green. So I am putting fallow green on my brush. And what I'm going to be doing is in essence kind of utilizing the dark background as my, um, as a base to provide a gradient on this fluffy kind of, um, knit hat <laughs> or cloth that we're doing so i'm utilizing this dark background in um the dark color without my white right now just to kind of give myself a base i'm leaving a little bit of the black alone at the bottom of it and i'm providing this really kind of wet thick paint up at the top i've got the green on there now now i'm touching my brush a little bit in white paint and this is going to amp up the color of that um, of that green so it's going to give you that bit of brightness and the areas where it remains darker you it will get even darker as it dries so you can you can make this as bright or as dull as you want I'm going to get mine into this pretty like teal kind of color so I'm utilizing the little bit of white on my brush just to give me this textural type of effect and I get it to go darker and darker as it goes down into what I'll call like the creases of the um, of the knit hat so you can really play with the dimensional elements of it by just getting it to be lighter at the top and kind of fading down towards a darkness down towards the bottom and the dotting will give you that textural type of effect. I think I'm going to make it a little bit lighter up here just by adding a little bit more white to the equation and then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing down below. So on the scarf I want there to look like there's kind of layers of the scarf so I just put some of the fallow green on my brush and I might have had a little bit of the white remnants still on my brush as well which is totally fine but I'm just going to kind of at the top of these ridges or bumps that I had on mine I'm just going to elevate them by adding that bit of the green and then what I'll do is once I've got the green on there I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of white paint I'm going to add a um, <clears throat> an element where this actually one of these pieces looks like it's kind of coming out and over so I'm going to pick back up a little bit of my green just so I can uh, maybe green plus a little bit of white so I can have this one piece that almost like comes out 
on top of the rest so it really makes it look like a scarf so I just added a little bit more white to my brush to allow for this one piece to kind of pop out more than the rest and that's a great trick especially since we're using this back this dark background to if you want there to be like a 3d or a three-dimensional effect to it just keep that lightest piece on the outside and then I'll just utilize a little bit of white on my brush to get these other pieces to pop out as much as I want them to. So you can just have a real subtle effect or you can really make it super voluminous by adding these, um, this, by adding a lot of lightness to these areas. And if you feel it goes too light, you can always just kind of wipe your brush off on the paper towel with, um, wipe a lot of that white off pick up more of the original green and then just kind of get it to to blend in a little bit into that black by just adding a, li a little bit more of that richness from the green. And if that doesn't work, you can always let it dry for a minute and just paint it back black and start over because <laughs> this is a great background to make any corrections with. I just put a little bit of black so I could separate this front piece from this side piece. And then I'm going to, I think that looks pretty darn good. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna go over to the other one. The colors on this one are gonna be the rust color. So I did this so they would kind of color coordinate and kind of look like there's some harmony in my color palette here. So I'm just picking up the rust color and I'm going to do the same type of thought process. I'm going to use my um, rust out, up at the top of the rim of this particular hat and I'm going to still make it look like it's got some, some texture and some fluffiness to it. So I'm just utilizing this dotting effect so it's a little bit lighter at the top and then just kind of gets a little bit darker as it gets down towards the bottom part of that hat. And the less paint I have on my brush as it gets down towards the bottom, the darker it will be. Because with um, this translucent type of acrylic paint, what will happen is the more paint you have, the brighter it will be because you won't really be able to see through it. And the less paint that you're using on top of the black, the more you'll be able to see through it. So that'll give it that natural kind of gray, gradient to it. And then I've got a good amount of paint back on my brush so I can get some real um, brighter parts up at the top of the hat. And you can make the hat look like it's got little dips in it by having you know more of your color up here and then getting it to have less of the color in certain areas that's going to make it look like you've got little dips in the hat and you can certainly again just play with that dimensional element by having more or less paint on your brush so now i'm just i have very little paint on my brush right now just getting it to kind of fade into the darkness as it's going down towards the rim of the hat and i'm just making sure i have a little bit of color on there and i'm going to now pick up a tiny bit of white paint to get some of these tops i don't want it to look like snow yet but i definitely want there to be a little bit more lightness up at the top just to give it um, more of a 3D type of look to it, but that's just my painterly eye wanting that. <laughs> Yours might not need it to go that far, but if you want it to, you can just add that bit of, of white to it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and move down to the scarves. That's gonna look pretty good to me. And it'll get darker as it dries, so just understand that when you are working on this, on a black ba base like this, that as it dries, it definitely will get darker. So if it's a bit bright for you as it's wet, just you know, be, be patient, let it dry, and see if you wanna make any adjustments after it dries. So I'm gonna come down to this scarf here, just wiped my brush off on my paper towel, picking up some of the, the rust color. Gonna plan this out, I'm gonna have um, this one piece kind of coming down in front. So I think I'm gonna tackle that one first so I just have it clear in my head that I want that one to be kind of the brightest. And here you can, you know, definitely just dot it. That's gonna, again, give you the most textural effect if you want it to look like a, light, a nice, you know, nice fluffy kind of knitted winter piece of garment. Um, the fluffiness will add to that illusion. And then as I am doing these pieces, I'm gonna let it get a little bit darker as it's getting towards the, um, the piece that's in front. So just kind of dotting this in through here and then just lightly dotting it as it goes towards this one that I want to 
look like is in in the front and then just of course dotting this as it goes down into here maybe giving a little swipe at those little ruffled pieces at the edges and then I will pick up a tiny bit of white just to get that front piece to go a little bit lighter so just a little bit of white on my brush just to get this front piece and maybe a little bit on these top pieces to get a little fluffier and then we're going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step so once you've got your scarfs and your hats all nice and done you can put the medium brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our beaks and our eyes i'm going to be using my small brush the colors that i'm going to be using are that creamy beak color that we used plus burnt sienna white black and blue and how i'm going to do this is i'm going to do my beaks first and then i'll do my eyes so really what i'm looking to do is have my beak kind of pop out a little bit um, and then i'll put a mouth and some nostrils and then we'll do some some pretty eye colors so i'm going to start with some white paint on my brush i'm going to put the white paint in the middle of the beak where I want it to pop out the most and then I just get it to kind of blend out into that yellowy kind of color and then I'm going to pick up some of that yellowy color in order to just make sure that they blend in well together and if you need to add more white to that center feel free to do so and then once I've got them blended out to these edges what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a little bit of my uh, burnt sienna and give myself a little bit of shadow or dimension around the edges of this beak. So this is one of those steps that you can cross over into your um, into the feathers if you wanted to. I'm putting it kind of in these little areas that dip in. So this is going to give you this neat little um, 3D type of look to it. I just picked back up some of that um, light yellowy orange color so I can get that rust to blend in with it. Just kind of painting right over it so they talk to one another and make sense with each other. And of course you can amp that up and get it to be as exciting as you want or as subtle as you want and maybe you don't even want it at all and then once you've got that done what i'm going to do i just wipe my brush off on my paper towel i'm picking up a little bit of black paint and i'm going to do a couple of nostrils so i'm just doing these little tiny um marks by the top little tiny dots and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to do my mouth so my mouth is going to kind of travel in the in a similar way that the bottom of the beak does and i'm going to have it curl up a little bit on the edges just making sure my brush is nice and pointy so i'm going to start over on this right hand side oops my canvas just moved on me good thing it moved before i started painting so i'm going to start up here i do a little kind of curve like that bring it down back up and then give it a little curve like that and of course you can have yours doing whatever kind of cute gesture that you want it to i'm going to move over and do the same thing to the other beak so i washed my brush i'm picking up white paint i'm going to do this area in the center with just white paint so i can have that little spot kind of stick out i'm going to get it to blend out into the yellowy orange area. Then I'm gonna pick up some of that yellowy orange so I can get that to just blend right in and have kind of a seamless transition as it's going around the um, beak and in towards those edges and just kind of getting that to blend out a little bit. And then I'm gonna pick up a little bit of burnt sienna so picking up, I didn't wash my brush, just picking up a little bit of burnt sienna to get it into these um, little curved areas or these little dips, so to speak. Wiping my brush off on my paper towel, picking back up some of that orangey yellow color and just making sure that I've got this burnt sienna kind of blending in with the main part of the beak. And again, this could be one of those um, 
little areas that you do a lot to or not. Whatever is comfortable for you is totally fine. Maybe you want to have a, a flat beak that totally works. This will just give you a little bit more information in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just wipe my brush off on my paper towel, pick up a tiny bit of black paint, give myself those cute little nostrils somewhere in through here, and then give myself that little bit of a fun you know gestural type of mark for the for the mouth over in through here and then just kind of curl it up a little bit on that side i'm going to wash and dry my brush and i'm going to go in for some colored parts of the eyes so i'm just going to use my ultramarine blue and white to give some blue areas on the edges of the eyes so I'm going to start with ultramarine blue on my brush. I'm going to go from the upper right hand corner and then just kind of scoop it down into this bottom left hand corner. I'm not going to color the whole eye. I'm just really giving it so a blue eye, <laughs> you know, just a little blue section to the eye. I'm leaving, I'm not going all the way to the edges either. I'm leaving a little bit of black around the edges so once I've got a good amount of the blue the dark the ultramarine blue I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of white paint and just kind of get those two the the ultramarine blue and the white to talk to one another a little bit give myself a little bit of um, color variation in that uh, place for the eye and then once I've got that as beautiful as I want I'm going to do the same thing to the other eye so just picking up some ultramarine blue going from that upper outside corner of the eye and bringing it down towards the inside corner of the eye. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And you might find like, um, if you wanna put the eye in front or underneath the hats, that's gonna to be totally up to you. I think I'm gonna have this one underneath the hat and the one over on the left-hand side might be in front of the hat. So you can totally have fun with figuring out where you want those. I just picked up white plus a little bit of the ultramarine blue so I can get, again, those two colors to talk to one another in these um, in the colored sections of the eyes, leaving that bit of um, black area around the edges. And if you get them too light or too dark, feel free to adjust that color however you want to. And then once you've got the colored part on there, I'm going to put some twinkles. So I'm just going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I'm picking up some white paint. I'm going to have a couple of twinkles up by the tops of the eyes. So maybe I'll have like a little dot and maybe a bigger dot and then maybe a little swipe. And then I'll do something similar over on the other eye. I'll have a dot and a a little bigger area and then maybe a little swipe and then I'll do the same thing over on these eyes up here. So maybe we'll have a dot, a circle, and a little swipe and then we'll have a dot, a circle, and a little swipe. And of course you can have yours whatever way you want. And then you can just kind of fiddle and adjust and do whatever you want to them. We are going to be utilizing our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your eyes and you're, oh, oh, you know what? There's one thing I forgot that I wanted to do. I think I want to add some little eyelashes on this one. So I'm going back in for some black. Hold on a second here. I want this one to look a little feminine. So I'm going to just put a little bit of black on my brush and give it her, this one over here, some cute little eyelashes. You could use a little bit of watered down black paint or if the um, black paint itself works out for you, I'm just pulling out these feminine little eyelashes over here and then I you can't really see them on this side but if you felt that you could see yours on this side you could totally do them over there and then we'll be using uh, I think that's all I want to do <laughs> then we'll be using our medium brush for the next step so you can put your small brush away take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our feathers. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm going to use are Burnt Sienna, Phthalo Green, White, and the Yellow Orange color. So I'm going to be using the Yellow Orange to connect these two birds together so they look like they're, you know, in rhythm, in rhythm with one another. So I'm going to load my brush with that 
yellow orange color and really what I'm doing is I'm adding another layer of feathers only this time I'm going to allow for more stringy kind of feathers to appear I'm gonna have some kind of coming in front of the hats to give it a little bit more dimension and fluffiness and um, I'm just gonna have fun while I do it <laughs> so I've got that color on my brush I'm going in the same direction that I did initially, but I'm going to pull these out, some of them out a little bit further than that original footprint. And what's going to happen because I'm doing it that way, it's going to give you that additional bit of um, fun, energetic kind of feathers that all ostriches should have, in my opinion. <laughs> I'm going to bring some up in through here. And again, I'm just kind of right now using the yellow orange. I'll add the other colors in a minute. Right now I'm going to um, bring them out in front of that hat a bit. I'm going to bring some out over in, in through here. And I'm going to bring a little bit up in through here. And I'm really just enjoying this process. I'm not doing anything too tricky, just bringing the, the paint out in the directions that I want to see it come out and have, um, have this kind of airiness and excitedness to it. So I've got some on there. Now I'm going to put the same color over on this guy over here. So again, just following that original footprint of the of the feathers, but pulling it out just a little bit more. If you accidentally go into your scarf, don't worry about it. You'll be able to um, hide it with some strategic, strategically placed snow later. <laughs> and I'm go, going ahead and adding some over in through here. And you can see I'm not coloring the whole thing. This is just intended to be additional pieces of feathers. You don't have to... Um, Oh, you don't have to overpaint it. You don't have to paint the entire thing with this color. So I've got some in through there. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing that I did um, with the left ostrich over here on the right one and just bring, bringing this um, this uniform or this complementary color that they both have into all of these little feathers in through here. And as I work my way towards the top, or towards the hat, this is where I'll start to pull it out and make it even even funner than it already is. And once I've got this orange yellow color on, I will go back to um, the left ostrich and put um, additional additional pieces. But let me just kind of get a few of these. I really want these guys to kind of like fly out over here. That's looking good to me. So I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm just going to go into this one now. I'm picking up some burnt sienna to just make sure that I have some of my burnt sienna pieces coming in front of the hat. I don't need much, just a little bit in, in the areas where I felt that it needed those extra long pieces. Um, if you felt that you wanted them anywhere else, please feel free to do so. Or if you needed a second layer of that darkness, because the the um, burnt sienna is going to be represented as your dark color for the um, for the feather. So if you feel like you need any any more areas of darkness, that's that's the color to go for. And now I'm just going to pick up without washing my brush. I'm going to pick up some white paint, and I'm going to utilize the white on my brush to give me these real exciting um, exterior pieces. If you feel like your brush is overloaded with the burnt sienna and the yellow orange, you can always um, wipe it on your paper towel or wash it. I just wiped mine on my paper towel because um, I felt I was a little overloaded. And I'm just, again, just pulling out these lighter pieces because we are working so quickly with the um, the last layer that we did with the colors are probably still wet underneath and they're going to start to work together and look like they belong together. So again, I just continue to pick up white at this point. I may end up picking up a little bit of the orange again, the yellow orange again, if I go through this process and, and feel that I want some more of those um, those vibrant tones on top of the, the white that I'm doing right now. I can certainly do that, but right now just kind of letting these little pieces fly away. Oh my God, it's so cute. I love getting to the end stages of these um, characters when you start to add the final touches on them because they just start to come to life and they really, it really gets me excited <laughs> when I start to see them come to life like this. That's so cute. Oh my gosh. Okay, hold on. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of that orange color, get a little bit more happening in this center area. Oh my God, it's so cute. 
I'm gonna bring some in front of the hat. Okay, all right. I'm gonna move on to the other one. They excite me when they get it, when they get alive like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and I just washed my brush because I knew I had lots of colors on. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up some of my uh, phthalo green. Again, this is my dark color. So if I felt that there was any areas that I need needed to just really, you know, accentuate the darkness, I would make sure that I have that incorporated. So right now, just kind of looking through the whole thing, seeing if there's any additional areas that I want to have darkness, as well as starting to pull it in front of the hat, like we did on the other one. So I'm utilizing the, um, the green right now to put some wet pieces in front of that hat. And as soon as I start to utilize the white on my brush, you'll be able to see those a little bit more. But right now, just kind of making sure that they are alive in front of that hat. And now I'm gonna start to pick up white plus my, um, plus my phthalo green. So I have white and phthalo green on my brush right now, just getting these additional um, pieces to kind of come alive. And again, if you want yours even brighter, just you can utilize just white if you wanted to. Gonna give myself some pieces coming out of here with a little bit of the white. Uh, and of course it's intermingling, like I said, with those, with the base color or the, the first layer of the orange and the green that we put on. So it just really starts to work well together and you get all of these little individual pieces. The trick is just to not overwork it. If you sit in and continually do these paint strokes over and over and over each other, then it will all blend together and look like one solid color. And if that happens, that's okay. You can certainly roll with that, but if you do want the individual looking pieces, maybe just give it a minute, let it dry, and then you can start adding those individual pieces on top of it. And you just keep layering the colors until you feel that you've got as much dimension on it as you want. I just picked up a little bit more white to get these um, little exterior pieces over here to just kind of shine bright and then I'm gonna again I'm just utilizing my dirty brush right now with the there's a little bit of white on there and the remnants of everything else is starting to starting to kind of all talk together right now and then I'm just gonna bring some of these pieces in front of the hat and this is where it starts to make me really <laughs> excited. <laughs> Again, highlights and shadows, they I, they bring stuff to life. So right now we're we're adding all the highlights, the little highlighted pieces onto these um onto these feathers. So it's really making me excited. So I just added a little bit of the phthalo green so I can really see these pieces in front of this hat and through here. And then I'm just gonna kind of start pulling them out as much as I want. I keep interchanging the white and the phthalo green just so I can have um, a whole bunch of movement on here. And I'm picking up some of the orange too. <laughs> so whatever whatever is speaking to you, feel free to do it. So white, uh, phthalo green and orange are the colors I'm using for this little guy. And then once you feel that you've got it in the, um, fluffiness that you want. You can certainly keep tweaking it as much as you want. We're gonna utilize our large brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, if you can ever stop, you can uh, put this medium brush away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint some snow. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and the color I'm using is white. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna first put some snow on my hats and my scarves and then we'll put some flying in the air. So when I do this, I uh, on these smaller objects, I do kind of want my brush to be in control. So what I will typically do is take it and put it in the white paint and then just kind of squish it on the side of my palette. That way my bristles will kind of be brought together and I can control where I want to put this snow. And on these objects, I put the snow on the highest part where I feel that the snow would accumulate the most. So on my hat in through here, and I'm just gonna use the corner of my brush so I can kind of dictate where I want it to kind of sit. I'll put a little bit in through there. I'll put some in through here. And you can put this really heavy. You can put it really thin, whatever you want, but I put it on the edges. And then what I'll do is I'll 
I'll kind of tap a little bit of it into the hat itself too so that way it looks like maybe these little guys have been sitting out in the snow for a little while <laughs> instead of just you know two minutes so I'm gonna put some in through here and then maybe just let a little bit of it kind of sit over and maybe a little bit sits over here and I hardly have any paint on my brush right now and I'm just lightly kind of tapping it so I can get these little speckly marks throughout um, throughout the hat. I'm gonna go down to the scarf portion. So maybe a little bit is sitting in through here, maybe a little bit on the top edges over here and over here. And again, hardly any's on my brush right now, just kind of tapping it as much as I want to in through there. And then maybe I can get to it down here, a little bit sitting on the, the edge of this scarf in through here and again you can really have fun with putting it wherever you want if you want a little sitting on the side that works too I'm gonna reload my brush while to go over to my big hat over here so I've got some piled up on the tippy top maybe in through here and in through here and then maybe I've got a big little pile in through here big little pile that's <laughs> kind of redundant so a big comparatively speaking it's because it's not very big and then I'm going to put maybe a little bit over in through here and then maybe a little bit in through here and then I'm going to just wipe my brush off on my paper towel so I can lightly kind of tap it going into the hat and this way again it'll just maybe look like it's been you know lightly dusted and is just kind of falling down or sticking a little bit to other areas of the hat and of course you can it, you can make yours have uh, snow all over it. It's totally fine. We're going to kind of have a snowstorm anyway, so it would make sense if there was little pieces of snow in front of a lot of the hat anyways, but I think that's about as far as I'm going to go on that one. I'm going to put some sitting on some of these pieces of this scarf in through here. I think I need to reload just a little bit so I can have just a couple of little pieces sitting there and there, maybe a little bit on this little part over here showing that it's kind of flipping out a little bit or out, bumped out a little bit and then I'm going to let it snow in the sky. So once you've got your um, your ostriches done I'm not going to wash my brush I'm going to start up at the top with my with it I got a good amount on there but not a ton and I'm going to start at the top so it's pretty darn heavy. I'm just using a dotting technique and then what I do is I let myself kind of run out of paint going down the canvas. So what'll happen is it'll look like the snowstorm is pretty heavy at the top and then it's just dis you know it's getting less and less as it goes down towards the um, towards the bottom of the canvas. You could certainly use a splatter technique. You can use, you know, there's a, a hundred different techniques that you could use to put snow on, but I like these bristle brushes because they are um, they've got you know they they can splay out easily and they can hold that paint in there because they're nice and firm so they'll give me these thousand little dots that I want and I can make it look like it's kind of a soft snowstorm and if you want it would make sense if the snow fell in front of your um, animals so if you wanted to put it lightly in front of you know some of those dark areas feel free to do so you can put some down below if you wanted to so just make it snow as much as you want it to if you need to hide stuff put snow in front of it so just have fun doing this and when you feel like you've got enough snow all over your canvas you can't we're going to use our uh, small brush for the next step so you can put your large brush away take out your small brush I'm just going to put a little bit down in through here so it really looks like it's snowing everywhere um, and then you can put this large brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step all right so we are on to the final step this is the final step of every painting which is to sign it so I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right corner I'm gonna go with my small brush I'm going with black paint I'm gonna go down in the bottom left corner I sign mine with my initials but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you want for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. It's your painting. You sign it however you would like. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself 
a couple of, of adorable winter animals, and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.